Hello, I just want to make this video to let you know that if you're a viewer on my channel, hopefully you subscribed, I will show you everything going forward over the years of what I buy for our portfolio and what I sell for our portfolio. Right now, if you watch my videos, you know I'm not in and out of the market every day. I try to buy and hold and be an investor until the market turns against it and then I get out. So in today's video, I'm going to explain a little bit more and exactly what I do as quick as possible in my thought process about why I do that. In the beginning, I try to grow our portfolio capital appreciation as fast as possible, yet being safe as possible at the same time. And I will show you exactly how I do that and why. And then that will set us up for the next step. Whenever we hit our target goal in our portfolio using my growth phase that I will show in just a second, I will go into the next phase as I get ready to retire. As we get ready to retire, then I will start to add stocks and money to stocks and funds that are safe that pay out dividends and distributions. Here are some examples right here, just some ticker symbols that may or may not be good at my time of retirement. But as of today, some of these I like and some of them are unknown. So if you look these ticker symbols up, you'll see some of these are the newer ETFs. It does not have a track record or history in it, so I'm not, I personally wouldn't buy them right now. I would like to see how they do over time. But anyway, I just put that ticker symbols there, so if I was to build a portfolio with income to replace our job, this is some I would look at to consider doing inside of my portfolio for different reasons for each one. I also want to add before I go on with this video, I want to add this thought. Even though right now I am growing our capital with what I'm about to show you, I will post and I have posted, if you look at my videos, on individual stocks or ETFs on dividends. <clears throat> I don't know if you're a fan personally of dividends or not. However, I really think you need to be in a mindset of dividend stocks and ETFs and then growth only and both. Anyhow, I, was, I do videos on dividend stocks for the simple reason is because I think it's never too early to learn the right way to look at a dividend stock to make sure it's going to be healthy and continue to do so because the last thing you want to do is grow your portfolio up and think you go buy these high yielding D ETFs or dividends and then it turn out not to be safe several years into your retirement and you wind up losing a lot of capital and then you're stuck late in life. That would suck a lot. I think growing the money first, like I'm about to show you, is a very easy way to do it. But the complicated part is finding finding stuff like this right here that is solid to keep paying you an income to replace your job so you can quit work. This is a little more complicated because you gotta look at certain things. But you don't have to make it that complicated. I explain what I look for in each one of these. Now there are some of these, like these these ETFs and stuff, like these the JEPI, JEPQ people talk about, SPY, I get it. They're attracted because people are attracted to a 12% return. I personally don't like anything unless I can look over a decade work, decade plus of history on something to see how it's going to work in all market cycles. So unfortunately for me, I'm building up our income. I'm building up our portfolio's capital. And then when my goal, which is 12 years from now, is to fully retire, then I, I have time to look back at these and see how they turned out over history. But anyway, <clears throat> so watch my channel and I'll show videos on individual companies because I like to go back and look at things I've said and see how it works out. That helps me learn to see how good these um, indicators are like free cash flow and the earnings reports and the forecast the earnings and all these things you need to look at. And it's very simple and I'll show you how to do it. Anyway, let's go. I've talked about this in another video a few times on my channel, but I'm going to make this video for exactly what I do, just so I can share this video in uh, my description of other videos so people ask what exactly I do. This is it right here. Okay, now, <clears throat> as again, when I'm first building up our money in our portfolio to get to my target goal, I want to grow the money as fast as possible. So that means I am not using SPY or a Vanguard ETF or none of that stuff. They have a place, but not for me because I don't want to wait 40 years for it to do something. I'm more, I lean toward the investing side versus the trading side because I believe it's over time you're better off as an investor than say a day trader or something like that for the most people. 
anyway so <clears throat> what I do is I use T triple Q the market is open so you can see it moving right here but I use T triple Q <clears throat> these are not hand-picked enter and exit symbols for a video these are real signals and I'm gonna show you how I get those signals so to grow our money faster doing this than you would in dividends you have opportunity about opportunity cost is one of the reasons I like this okay so <clears throat> the highest it got in this trade is a 496 percent gain that is from January 2012 to um, July 2015 it got to this peak but the signal was from January 2012 to February of 2016 so in a four-year trade it the signal was given to get out with a 290 289 percent profit so making a 289 percent profit from January 2012 to February 16 sounds very great to me I don't know about you and here's another example from July 2016 to December 2018 so a little over two years it made 80 percent profit peaked out at 272 percent but again if you don't sell that's unrealized returns but the signal was given here and if you're asking why didn't we got back in and higher because these are signals that are given for reasons because we're trying to avoid this stuff here <clears throat> April 2019 to February 2022 so you're looking at about three years not even three years of making a profit of 216 percent a peak of 456 percent the last signal was given on March 2023 and currently as of today it is up 111 percent and today is uh, March 14th 2024 so we're in the month of March 2024 and it's up 111 percent in a year so where it's gonna go from here I mean I can go off of averages I've talked about that in another video but I'm not sure 100 percent but their signals and this is on a monthly candle so now I get to show you the interest signal and talk about that oh and also while I'm here because I had a question a great question that you would think is if when the signal is given to get out could you buy SQQQ which is the inverse of TQQQ and the answer to that question without going and showing the charts you can pull up yourself the answer is no because uh, leverage ETFs are balanced, rebalanced every day. They do it off of you know volatility, a lot of different formulas, and it would not work out good for you. So right now, the exits were quick. I mean, here was an exit. It was only out for a couple months. Yes, you got in at a higher price and you got out. I get it. Here was an exit, and you and you get a couple more months and you're back in. And I get it. It's higher. You can do what you want, but when you play with triple leverage ETFs. You do not want to buy and hold it long term it will not work out in your favor especially if you go through another era like 2000 to 2001 2007 2008 I've done back tested this over and over again using <clears throat> simulations and true numbers from the past it will be horrible for you but for those that want to buy and hold a triple leverage ETF more power to you but I hope my kids do not do that and I will not do that at all I buy and hold it during the uh, signal and like here was an exit signal given and this is what we're trying to prevent right here because this is a huge drop and this for I'm trying to make this video really fast but you know what while I'm right here I want to show something if I can get it to shrink again unrealized returns but it hurts right so that's 80 can you out you can see on the screen right here that's negative 80.89 percent this little drop that you see only little video right here from the peak or around the peak to around the bottom is a negative 80 percent yes you entered here so it's about a break even but again if you're throwing in real money and when I say real money I mean thousands of hundreds of thousands of dollars 
over time, as you build up, you start off with $100, whatever. But you build up over time. And once you get up the real money later in life or whenever you get that money, you do not want to see it go up and it come plummeting down negative 80%. So you don't want to do that. So this gets you out of the trade and then you put the money you saved in the meantime to get back in the trade. I'll talk about that on the, in just a second when I show you the entry signal. Alright, on the enter, the entry and exit signals are given off of the NASDAQ 100. I've said it in other videos, but not the NASDAQ composite. There's a difference in the two. <clears throat> T triple Q is what I buy and sell, but I only buy and sell it off of the signals given off of the NASDAQ 100 right here. Ticker symbol NDX. N is in November, D is in Delta, X is in X ray. NDX. This is what the signals are given off of because those ETFs track the NASDAQ 100. The indicator on Yahoo Finance is free to use. I do not have this indicator that I'm about to show you on my Fidelity or Charles Schwab or anything else I've ever used. And maybe there's something out there that I'm unaware of. It is the moving average envelope is the indicator. Do not use the moving average deviation. M use moving average envelope. Moving average envelope. Your time period is at 10. Shift, leave it at 5. Moving average type, leave it on simple. And then you can make these any color you like. But for the purpose of this video, I will try to make it dark enough where you can see it. And voila, there it is. Now, these candlesticks are on a monthly time frame. That's very important. These are on a one month. The interval is one month, not daily. I know a lot of people look at daily or one minute for fast trading. That's not what I'm about. I'm about making money the safe way, the way that it works. Not trading, not being on here every day, not being on here every minute. I got a job, I got a life, I want to go on vacation. All right? So, <clears throat> the signal, if you... You see it, it's pretty self explanatory. But just in case this show you so you know how I use it. On a one month candle, at the end of that month, it will give you a signal. All these are monthly. When it closes at the end of the month on a trading day, above the top of this envelope, then that is a go. That is an enter. Whenever it closes below like it did here back in February 2022, when it closes below the bottom of this envelope is to get out. All the stuff in between inside the envelope is this noise and we're staying away from it or in it or out of it depending on what we're in. Now since we're in March 14th and it's been a very tight month, you get a small little candle here, it's above so it still hold. At any time I'm trying to find an example. Well, here, here we go. On um, February 2023, the candle has a wick that went above the envelope. That does not mean enter. Wait till the whole month is done, and then see. And it finished in the middle, so that would be enough. And over time, I back tested this going off the NDX all the way back to 1988. Yes, the NDX NASDAQ 100 was made, I think, in 1978, anywhere, late 70s. The NASDAQ deposit was made in 1971. I'm aware of all that. But 1987 was, uh, what was it, the Black Swan event and all kind of stuff. And then the stock market started putting in the circuit breakers based off the SP 500 and all these other rules. That's why I go off of 1988 on to see how everything is affected. Anyway, just so you know. So, any like right here... <clears throat> you would have entered the market on April 2019. The candle on March 2020 dropped below this envelope. Stay in the trade. That does not mean to exit because it did not close below it. This is an example. The very next month it closed above it and you're still in the trade because you would have entered in April of 2019. Then the exit was actually given way up here, here. 
So that would have actually made you a big profit. If you would have tried to get nervous and got out there, you would either have to make a decision to re-enter or whatever here. Now, for clarity, I didn't do all this way back then. I wish I knew about this. This is something I come across because I'm always playing with stuff in the market and seeing how to, to do something without having to trade all the time. But I just want to show you some examples. And here's an example of 2015, which was a sideways year. You can see all the candles inside of the envelope. You've got it, red candles, green candles, red candles, green candles, whatever. This is what I'm trying to avoid. Because if you use, it, if you use this a 10 moving average, you go get whipsawed. I've already back tested all that. That does not work out. It, you'll make money, but you'll be in and out. A lot more trades, a lot more losses, and all this other stuff. If you use a 200 day moving average on a daily candle, this will pretty much be very similar but you'll have a lot of noise because in the markets which they do go sideways you'll have a lot of whipsaw in and out and then you got to run in you will run into something called a wash sale rule if you don't know what a wash sale rule is google it investopedia or whatever and look it up it does not apply inside of an ira so if you have this in a traditional ira or roth ira you do not have to worry about a wash sale rule however you will if you have a regular brokerage account you have to worry about a wash sale rule so again, I'm just showing you exactly what I do and how I do it and why I do it. And here's another reason why I do it. One, cap appreciation, you get huge returns on it. Two, I use a monthly candle. That's important to me because I have a job, so I don't want to be at, looking at my computer every day the market closes. Two, I like to go on vacations and I will post all my vacations going forward just to share because people need to live life. Enjoy the journey on life. Don't just be living frugal or just living well below young you mean so you can't live life anyway so if it's on a monthly candle that means I technically only had to look at it the last trading day of each month or the first trading day of the month if you work a job and you're not there for when the market closes don't sweat it look at it that evening make your decisions to do whatever you are comfortable with at the open of the next day <clears throat> you can do that you can do it at the open or to close, I do because I'm home in the afternoons when the market closes. I look at the market the last hour, last half hour of the trading day, and if the signal's being given, and I know it's going to be well above my enter, then I'll look for an entry point based off of a short time frame of a minute candle. I don't try to get fancy, but I we I have multiple accounts I manage for. Our family, my wife and I, we have multiple, you know, IRAs and regular brokerage accounts. So, it's, to me, I use Fidelity. I can get in with a dollar amount, and I can get in within the last 15 minutes of the trading day and get our positions going. But these are great because they, when you're in, you're in for a long period of time normally, and when you're out, you're normally out for a short period of time unless you're in a bear market, which is fine. Because here, let me hit on this real quick. For an, for instance. Because this will happen. We're building up our money in the growth phase, or you're building up your money in the growth phase. Think about this now. This is what I want people to think about. You grow your money, and then you're like, <clears throat> you get one of these big rips. You don't have to wait for the exit signal. If your goal is $2 million, or $1.5 million, or $1 million, whatever your goal is, look for that dollar amount to hit, and then you can sell it. Now remember, if you're not inside of an IRA, you're going to have to pay taxes on your capital gains. So take that in consideration when you're going for your dollar amount. I really didn't want to talk about all this here. But the target, if you don't have Social Security coming in, you don't have a pension coming in, you don't have a 401k at work, you don't have anything other than your investments you're joining yourself on the stock market, you want to aim for 20%, not 20%, 20 times the amount you want to retire on annually at a minimum. Because that gives you the, the the ability to get in a portfolio, build your portfolio off of an average of a 5% yielding portfolio that grows to give you what you need in retirement. 25% is ideal. I mean, not 25, I keep saying percent. 25 times the annual amount is ideal. But 20 a do fine too. Anyway, uh, there is a lot. Of stocks out there and ETFs out there to pay around 8% but they don't grow most of them don't grow you can find a lot of stocks that are a 3% starting yield 4% 5% that do grow I want my money to grow in retirement so that's why I aim for 2025 
I gotta take into consideration of our pensions and social security and stuff like that. So I may not need quite as much as I think I need inside the stock market. Thanks for watching and hopefully you understand how to enter and exit what I do. I'm not, again, do what you're comfortable with. I'm not responsible for what you do. I'm just showing you why I do what I do and how I do it. It's very simple. I don't want people to overcomplicate things or to try to get rich too quick and then they mess up. Keep it simple.